Okay, 210.19, conductors, minimum ampacity and size. I really like this change. The branch circuit tap for kitchen equipment was expanded to allow for 40 amp branch circuits and not just 50. Now, if you're already familiar with this rule, then maybe that's all you need to know. We could only tap a 50 amp circuit before and now we can tap a 40 amp branch circuit. If you're interested in why that is or how this calculation works and how to do ranges, then keep on watching. We go into 210.19A3, household ranges and cooking appliances. This is the general rule, this isn't the change. It says conductors for household ranges, ovens, cooktops, and similar must be rated not less than the branch circuit. Okay, you got a 40 amp circuit, you need 40 amp wire. If you have a 50 amp circuit, you need 50 amp wire. Easy enough. Ranges that are eight and three quarter KW or more require a minimum 40 amp branch circuit. All right, so this is the range in my house. I lifted the, you know, took the lid down and uh, the, opened the oven door, took a picture of it and it was 14.2 KW, which actually surprised me. That's a, a pretty big range and my, my range isn't really anything special. But we go to table 220.55 and we figure out how to do the branch circuit. And table 220.55 is a pretty overwhelming table the first time you use it and, and really until you get quite comfortable with it. It's pretty overwhelming. If you're new to it, let me make a recommendation to you. Take a big marker or whatever it is that you like to mark up your book with, a highlighter, or a sharpie, a pen, draw a big vertical line between columns B and C because this is where a lot of people screw up right off the bat. Columns A and B are expressed in percentages and column C is expressed in KW and it's really easy to find yourself like you got two appliances and you multiply it by 0.11 and, and that's that's not what this table says so do yourself a favor and, and don't screw up the fact that column C is not measured in percentages but let's go back to it number four branch circuit load it is permitted to calculate the branch circuit load for one range using this table and let's just stop reading there for a second so for a branch circuit of one range, I use this table. Up at the top, it also says column C is going to be used in all cases, except as otherwise permitted in note three. Okay, cool, we'll use column C then. So column C is based on the number of appliances, and we had one, because we were just doing a range. And it says that the maximum demand is eight KW for ranges up to 12 KW. And what the code is saying there is, look, even if you have a 12 KW range, you're probably not going to have it cranked all the way up to 500 degrees with all four burners on glowing red hot and the whole oven and range going full glow. So the code recognizes that and says, yeah, you know, it's only a 12 kW. It might be a 12 kW range, but we're going to pretend it's only 8 kW because you're only going to use, you know, three quarters or so of it. But that ends at 12 kW. If we go back, this range was rated 14.2 kW. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, now is where we read note one. For over 12 kW and up to 27 kW ranges, all of the same rating. Okay, well, there's only one range, so you know we don't have to worry about all of the same rating. So for a 14.2 kW range, ranges individually rated more than 12 kW but not more than 27, the maximum demand in column C must be increased 5% for each additional kilowatt of rating or major fraction thereof by which the rating of individual ranges exceeds 12. Okay, so I have 14.2 kW. That exceeds 12 kW by 2.2. So 2.2, that's not a major fraction, so I'm going to round it down to 2 kW, and I increase it 5% for each additional kW over 12. So I had 14, so that's 2. So 5% twice, so I'm going to take my 8kW and I'm going to increase that by 10%. So get my calculator out, I've got 8 times 1.1 is 8.8kW. .8 Beautiful. I want to get that into watts so I can work with it, so I'm going to multiply it by 1000, that's 8800 watts divided by 240 volts, and that means that it pulls, according to the NEC, a demand of 36 amps. Now there's no such thing as a 30 amp breaker or fuse, so I'm going to put it on a 40 amp circuit, run 8 gauge wire, and I've satisfied the general requirements. So that's how I do one range, nice and easy. Let's look at the change here. 
the change talks about multiple pieces of kitchen equipment in the same kitchen. A branch circuit not exceeding 50 amps. And right there you can see the change. It used to say a 50 amp branch circuit. Now it says a 40 or 50 amp branch circuit. Can be tapped for ranges, ovens, or cooktops. The taps must be no longer than needed for servicing the appliance and have an ampacity of at least 20 amps. Okay, so the taps have to be at least 12 gauge, but what we're saying is you can bring a 40 or 50 amp branch circuit to a junction box and then tap appropriately sized wire to the cooktop and each of the two ovens. Now when I say appropriately sized, minimum 12 gauge, and they have to carry the load. Not any sort of demand factor, but the actual load. So I'm gonna actually go off the nameplate when I size the tap conductors. Let's do an example. Here I've got my two ovens and I have my cooktop. Now I wanna go back to the table really quick because we need to keep reading note number four. It says the branch circuit load for one wall-mounted oven or one counter-mounted cooking unit is the nameplate rating of the appliance. Easy enough. The branch circuit load for a counter-mounted cooking unit, so a cooktop, and up to two ovens, all supplied from a single branch circuit located in the same room, can be calculated by adding the nameplate rating of those individual appliances and treating it as one range. All right, so I've got two ovens and a cooktop. I'm gonna take the nameplates of those three add them up, call it one range. So I've got two 3.25 kW ovens and one 7.1 kW cooktop. So I take my 3.25 plus 3.25 plus 7.1 and that equals 13.6 kW. Now again, going back to it, column C ends at 12 kW and we have to do what? For every uh, kW over 12, or major fraction thereof, we have to add 5%. Well, we had what, 13.6 was it? Yeah, 13.6. So that is one plus a major fraction of a kW, 0.6. So now we're going to treat it as though it's 14 kW. So we're going to take our eight, and wouldn't you know it, it's the exact same as the range we just did. Eight times 1.1 equals 8.8 times 1,000 divided by 240, as we know, is 36 amps. So I'm going to treat this whole assembly the exact same way that I treated this range. Now you see why the code change makes sense. I've always been able to use a 40 amp circuit for this individual range. And we're saying that the accumulation, the sum of these three pieces of equipment is the exact same as the range we just did. But I could put the range on a 40 amp circuit and if I wanted to use taps, I had to use a 50 amp circuit. Well, that makes no sense at all. So now we're saying, look, if, if the math works and you can put it on a 40 amp circuit, put it on a 40 amp circuit. Let's size the tap conductors. The taps have to be what? No smaller than 12 gauge and they have to satisfy the load to be served. So each of these ovens is what, 3.25 kW. So if I take my 3250 divided by 240, that means each of those two ovens pulls 13 amps. Now the tap conductors have to be at least 12 gauge as we already know, so I'm gonna pull 12 gauge to each of those ovens. And then for my cooktop, it was what, 7.1? So 7.1 kW times 7.1 kW times 1,000 equals 7,100 watts. Divide that by 240, 29.6 amps. All right, so it looks like we're good on a 10 gauge. We made it by what, half of an amp, but whether you make it by half of an amp or, or 10,000 amps, it doesn't matter. If you make it, you make it. So we're gonna run 10 gauge to my cooktop 12 gauge to each of my ovens, put it all on a 40 amp branch circuit in the 2020 instead of the 50 amp branch circuit that was required in the 2017. So not all code changes are out there to cost you money. Some of them, if you know how to do it, you can actually save money. So there you go. That is your kitchen tap rule in 210.19A3 exception one. Hope you enjoy the video.